Good evening, everyone. So I will share about my self-learned journey and how I become a data engineer. So uh, currently, I'm working for fintech startup as data engineer called Advanced by AI, and I'm also the founder of Coding Rose. Um, so my story begins back three years ago. Back in that time, I was working for a shipbroking firm. So my role is operation executive. So my day is like writing thousands of emails, making phone calls, chasing after different parties, and asking them to send me uh, different documentation. So I was boring about that job, and I really hate the, the tedious and repeatless of it. And the worst is, if one mistake, because we are shipping the oil products, the crude oil, so if one mistake can cost you millions of dollars, you have to be very careful. And so that is when, when I was thinking, if there's other possibility, I can write a program to help me to uh, do those tedious jobs and um, help me to make from the mistakes. So that, that is when I think about programming. How about I write a robot to help me to do those tedious jobs? So uh, back in that time, I, st I start to do a lot of Googling about programming. So um, I really learned very hard on it. And eventually, I become a data engineer uh, after maybe one year after learning. So, but my, my journey is not a smooth sailing. So there's a lot of difficulties when you learn on yourself. So the first thing I think for most of the beginners is you don't know where to start. Because once you Google it, there's lots of sounds of language you can choose from. And even you try to learn one language, there's so many resources out there. You don't know how to pick one. So this is your first barrier. Then the second is, once you start to follow some online tutorial, uh, you just most likely it's like copy and paste. So sometimes even copy and paste, you will fail. Even you copy paste the same code, you still fail. Maybe it's different environment, maybe you install different version. But for the beginners, they might they, they don't know how to debug. They may eventually uh, give up. So. Uh, even you have passed this this process, you debugging on your own and successful, but you don't know why. Why why I this one works and that one didn't work. So so also for some of the beginners, they also I think because I'm running coding girls, there's a lot of beginners come to us. So they all fail the same problem is the isolation. They don't know how to debugging and they don't know how to ask for help. So that, those are the problems. Uh, so my I have a lot of lessons learned here I want to share. Mm, so first one is to find your purpose. So before you take action, uh, you need to think twice. So ask yourself, uh, what is your purpose? Do you want, uh, why you want to learn programming? Is that you want to make a side project to earn some money? Or is that you, you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to code some products? or you really want to go into a career as a developer. So uh, once if you decide you want to transition your career in developers, you, you still need to do a lot of research. You, you sh should know different roles and what are those stacks they are looking from and um, what they do and uh, what, what, what will be the career path. So you have to be very honest about yourself and ask a lot of questions, go back and forth and go back and forth until you can make a plan. So once you decide which roles you are taking, you just decide to, um, then you should decide what, where you to begin and then make a plan. But don't be too ambitious and too rushed. So you, you have to prioritize what you should learn. So my suggestion is to choose one language first. 
So use the, that one language to understand the fundamental programming, understand those basic concepts like like what is loops, what is function. So don't rush. To, don't, you don't need to rush to create a project immediately. I think the foundation is very important. So also when you write the code. Especially when uh, you doing some online tutorial, be mindful of your code. You should understand what what's happening. Why right here this is a function, or this is is like the class, or those kind of stuff. So the last thing is you have to know algorithm. <laughs> I know uh, if you check on most of those coding bootcamp in the curricular. This part is missing, but I think it's wrong. No, the, the algorithm is essential to programming. The, once you know the algorithm, you will be able to write a better code and more efficiently program. So even if you want to find a job, if you want to apply for Google, Facebook, sales manager, tech companies, the algorithm is the part you cannot miss. Uh, here is some resource I recommend it. So I learned the basic HTML, CSS, and SQL on W3 school. Uh, the best part of it is that, is that the tutorial I think is very basic, but step by step. And the result is immediately, you don't need to set up the environment on yourself. And it allows you to do a lot of experimenting you know, and you can just write your code on it and it, once you click the wrong you will see the results. Uh, the second one is Udemy. Uh, the best part of Udemy is uh, each of the course that designed followed by a project. So that is where you can learn how to make a practical project. Uh, and so the Coursera is where I learned the algorithm. So Coursera is very academic. So I think you can find some really, really wonderful course on Coursera, especially those fundamental um, programs. So that, that is what I recommend. Uh, the free code camp, I didn't follow all the tutorial, but many of my friends, they just stick to this one and follow, finish all, all of the tutorial. Maybe it might take you like six months or even longer. But uh, I think this one is where if you can finish all the course on Facebook camp, you might be have the basic skill to become a web developer. So the data camp, I will recommend for those who want to be data analytics. So data camp, they have a lot of program on R and Python, and uh, I check on the curricula. It's like very, um, very trendy, and the instructor is really the developer from Python and R. So I think this is the top expert who contribute to the curricula. So of course, the last one, Stack Overflow, is very one. We find a problem, we debugging and looking for Stack Overflow for an answer. So of course, we also have our friends, Google. Google can answer a lot of questions for you. Um, so after you make a plan, so you need to focus on practice. So. Um, and you should keep working on. So this is lead code. This is where I practice my algorithm. So I think most people don't do it, but I think for the beginners, you still need to know algorithm, and uh, they will provide the problems and solutions. Sometimes I think some complex technique test is is come come from the lead code. So. This is also help you to prepare your technical test as well. Uh, then the, the third advice is to join a groups and a community. So one of the products I mentioned when you self-know is lock, lock of help and lock of feedbacks. 
So I think today you are already here, which means you you already know this. So yes, um, it's good to find a community. I think tech community is very helpful and they are very kind to each other. And if you have problem, just ask as the experts from the community. And also, listening to their talks is a way you can keep up, up with those real, real world problems. So from the online tutorial, there is always a gap between your working skills and the, the online tutorial's results. So this is where you can know what are the gaps you are lacking. Mm. So after this, you should start to plan to build your online profiles and also show the person on the, off, on the community as well. So my suggestion is you should build your online profile. Maybe you can create a website or maybe you can do some side project and publish it to the and also you might can you can contribute to the GitHubs as well. And also take computations. So uh, there's some websites for the programmer, one is HackRank, and the other one is called Kaggle. This is more for the data scientist people. So also you can take some hack zones. Most likely the organizer of the hack zone, some most likely they, they have some hiring opportunity as well. So join Hackson, practice your pro problem solving skills and get to know the people from the complex and you might increase your chance to be hired. So how to prepare for your job interviews? Uh, do your research on the complex. There is a one called Blast glass doors. There's a lot of people share their uh, interview experiences. So you can learn from the answers and get to know what would be the hiring process, how many interviews, and what will be the technical question like. And also, uh, for the most tech companies, they have their referral program. So don't be shy to ask someone on LinkedIn, even they don't know you before, to ask them to refer to refer you to the job opportunities because once you get the job, they get the money, so they will be more than happy to help on that. Um, so this is a website on how you can write your developer resumes. So to summarize is to highlight the, those skills they are looking for and showcase about the project you have done. If you don't have the working experiences, your side project will be very helpful. Um, so for the technical interviews, in general, they, they just want to test you, your ability on purpose for problem solving. So you just choose one language you are comfortable with. And when you answer this question, think about edge case and the color case, and think about the time, time and space complexity. So, and you should know how to write a test. Um, and to keep the system be like thinking in your mind. So, if you think you are not there yet, but keep those tips in mind. So trying to improve your <coughs> knowledge on that. Uh, th there is also a book called Cracking the Coding Interview. I didn't read it, but a lot of people recommend so I just put it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the last, my last suggest is fake it until you make it. So, for me, I think my journey is like this. Uh, back in two years ago, I started to organize coding goals. Back, back in that time, I'm not an engineer yet, and I just get the idea about what is front-end and what is back-end. But I didn't uh, deny myself and organize those workshops. I can find the expert to teach. And also, I take the responsibility to organize those workshops, so I force myself to learn more. 
So I think also you can think about sharing your knowledge to the community. Even if you think you are just junior, you still got something to share. So that that is when you know um, that is when you know actually you are you are really you are you might be good at something. So that's all for me. Thank you, everyone.